Well, there's a warrior among you with an arsenal of dust and the mercy of humanity in his trembling hand. Good afternoon, everyone, and on behalf of the Muley family, I welcome you to the memorial service for Louis Bertram Muley, known as Bert, B-E-R-T and not B-U-R-T, that he always took the opportunity to correct the folks. Bert was our beloved friend, husband, father, professor, father-in-law, colleague, planner, grandfather, and great-grandfather. I wish to thank Dearest Lois and her family, as I am pretty sure that it was a group decision to ask me to be this role as mistress of ceremony for this very special service. I am truly honored. You may well hear many tales and anecdotes and stories about Bert today. And I'm going to take an opportunity just to tell my very short story and maybe why I landed at this particular role this afternoon. Bert and I, plus many others, worked very hard and very long and together to save Lighthouse Field and then also the Coastal Act. But it was later when Bert was mayor in the late 70s that I applied to go on a committee or commission on the Santa Cruz City Council. Now, it took Bert several tries to get four votes to get me on a committee commission. And he did, and he did succeed. And the Sentinel even had a headline somewhat read, Muley finally gets an appointee. <laughs> Bert and I chuckled about that for a long, many, many years. It was to the Citizens Committee for Community Improvement. It lasted about two to three years, and that was that end of that committee. But it certainly was my kickoff for my political career. 33 years it has been. And as late as 2008, Bert and Lois gave me a victory brunch on their wonderful patio, where I know many of you have been to many events on that patio. And I was honored to be invited and to put on this a brunch for me with many of my colleagues who are sitting here, but also that they continue to be my mentor. And everyone wants a mentor like Bert and Lois. Kind, wise, fun, funny, and just plain spirited. And for that, I thank Lois and I thank Bert. Bill Alio met Bert in 1972 as a student when Bert was a lecturer in the Environmental Studies program at UCSC. In his career post UCSC, Bill has been a planner with the California Coastal Commission and the cities of Davis and Salt Lake City and the state director of the Sierra Club. Today, Bill is a legislative advocate for the nonprofit group, the Environmental Working Group. Welcome, Bill. Thank you very much, Catherine. Welcome, thank you very much. I was so honored to be able to speak on behalf of the many students uh, that Bert mentored and taught over the years, and I'm speaking for San Jose State students as well as UC Santa Cruz. 
Um, and I told her I was really nervous about this speech. I don't know why. I had to write it, which I usually never do, but I'm going to do my best not to read too much to you. Um, I met Bird at a time when words like ecology, holistic, and environmental planning were new words. So this was the cutting edge time uh, for the, th the things that Bird loves so much to teach about. William Butler Yeats said, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. When I met Bert in 1972, he lit my fire. And he lit it for hundreds of more students over the years. So what put him in a position to do this? Bert got his master in city planning from UC Berkeley in the early 1950s, which was a great time of innovation in the field. He then worked through a couple of uh, county planning departments. And then looking for a really good place to raise his family, he achieved the position of planning director of Santa Cruz County. But in time, he came to the opinion that the people making the decisions on planning and permitting, the Board of Supervisors, were simply caving in too much to developers. Bert said that the last straw for him was the approval of the oceanfront portion of the seascape development in Aptos. In his professional judgment, housing sites should not be allowed to cascade down unstable coastal bluffs and onto sandy beaches. So at the age of 48, when you're supposed to be hitting your peak earning years, and Bert had a family to feed, he took a leap of faith and courage and resigned his position as planning director. Let me read from his resignation letter. I feel that there is a great need for fundamental change in the decision-making process as it relates to planning and development if we are to have hope for saving the environment and if planning is to be relevant to the social concerns of our time. I have chosen to devote the remainder of my career to making the planning process more effective, and the role that I have chosen will require that I be free of the restraints on political activity that go with government employment. Human rights and environmental rights are inseparable, and it has been through past neglect of these rights and the decision-making processes of government that we have generated the awesome problems that we now face. It is my opinion that we have a chance to stop the current trend towards environmental and social degradation but not if we continue to slavishly adhere to time-worn concepts of urban growth and development promoted and lobbied by the special interests within our society. He wrote this letter in 1970. I urge you to read the entire letter, which will be on display in the adjoining room afterwards. It's quite remarkable, and remember the time, 1970, and what he was launching and doing. Reminds me of the Steve Jobs speech that I'm sure many of you have seen now to the graduates of Stanford University in 2004 about follow your heart. Bert started teaching at the brand new urban planning program at San Jose State University and shortly thereafter in the fledgling environmental studies program at UC Santa Cruz. So what kind of teacher was he? I clearly remembered that besides giving us a background in the technical issues planners face, like zoning ordinances, his lectures were about the role a planner must take and about a favorite item of discussion in planning schools. Is a planner an objective technician, or is he or she also an advocate? Well, you can guess where Bert came down on that issue. <laughs> but what hooked me, what made me excited about becoming a planner myself, first came from a simple class assignment. He had each one of us follow a local planning item at a city or county, and I chose an annexation by the city of Capitola. They were looking at a chunk of land along 41st Avenue near Highway 1. At the time, it seemed kind of dreadfully boring to me, and it did until Bert pulled back the curtains and showed myself and the rest of the class what was going on. The city council, the planning commission, were looking at maps and cost-benefit analysis, but they were doing so in a decidedly political context. A process that seemed kind of boring to me up to that point, and obvious to me now, came alive at that point. Bert showed us all that land use decisions were inextricably woven together by politics and therefore subject to pressures brought to bear by interest groups, be they developers or citizens. Another seminal moment for me was when Bert showed us the unimplemented and put off general plan for the city of Santa Cruz, which showed solid urban development from Western Drive to Four Mile Beach, housing developments, fire stations, shopping centers. He explained how close we came to having that scenario rather than what we had at that time and today, which is a world-class scenario of coastline with functioning agriculture, habitat, and recreation. As a teacher, he gave us the guidance on how to avoid bad planning decisions of the past. We're so fortunate that he gave his energy to two academic institutions, 
and influenced so many. And how good was he at this job? About 10 years after I left Santa Cruz, I found a class roster from one of his quarter classes at UC Santa Cruz. There were about 22 students in the class, and I went down that list with some of my colleagues, and about 18 of them, 10 years later, were planners, natural resource managers, and the like. And I thought that amazing at the time, even more so now, because people don't always follow what they say they're going to do when they're 18, 19, 20, but Bert made people like me and others go, I want to do this. I want to help change the world. That's what Bert was about. He was also an activist in the effort to save our coast. He was a principal in the Coastal Alliance, the group that put Proposition 20 on the ballot in November of 1972 on the heels of repeated failures by our state legislature to adopt a coastal protection scheme. He drafted a key part of the initiative and then worked tirelessly to get that initiative passed. He put together a slideshow of what bad planning could do to our coast and showed that up and down the coast to people. It included things like the Holiday Inn in Monterey built on the beach, our own Dream Inn here, what we called later the warts of coastal planning. Um, I won't tell any more about that slideshow because his son has a further story about it. But Bert was integral in getting Prop 70, Prop, <laughs> Proposition 20 passed in 1972, at that time by what was considered a landslide, 54 point something percent. And the rest is history as far as the coast goes, although it's built a lot of fights. On a personal note, Bert Muley launched my career. He grabbed me and another student, Les Sternad, and said, you ought to get down there and be an intern at that new coastal planning agency. I said, huh? I was 21 years old. And he personally arranged for those internships for Les and myself, and that led me to a long career in coastal zone management. I was with the Coastal Commission 20 years as staff and in other environmental planning endeavors that Bert got me into. He also wrote a letter to get me into graduate school, and I hope at the open mic later, other students of his at San Jose and Santa Cruz can speak about what Bert meant to them as a mentor. Many years later, after leaving Santa Cruz, I thought back about what made me relate so well to Bert's messages. It just may have been my mother. She told me, take a stand. There are white hats and black hats, and you're going to go work for the white hats. And that's what Bert was like, too. I eventually found there are a lot of shades of gray in everything we do and where we work. But I think Bert picked up where my mother left off. He was like a father to me and pointed me down the path of fighting for the environment and a better quality of life for humans. And, and he gave me a loving shove down that path. I love you, Bert, and thanks so much for all the help you gave me and so many other students and professionals in the career. It's a great honor to participate in contributing to this mosaic of Bert's incredible life and contributions to our community. Bert really captured, we talk about thinking globally, acting locally. Bert thought and acted locally and globally. And you look at the connective tissue, the trajectory of his life, the professionalism as a planner, understanding the, the science of environmentalism, extending that as a teacher, as a planner, and then in the political arena, bringing that expertise and knowledge into the policy arena. Uh, as one of the early environmental pioneers on the Santa Cruz City Council, where he served for eight years, also two terms as mayor, and always providing that linkage of the technical scientific expertise with the essential arm of politics, policy, and advocacy. But in my connections with Bert and Lois, it's always been with Bert and Lois, with Lois and Bert, particularly in the arena of conflict resolution, where they both contributed mightily. And I think, again, from the understanding and the application of extending in our local communities the importance of teaching the skills and the science of conflict resolution, not just a broad umbrella that we should all be committed to conflict resolution, but what are the tools that allow us to better communicate, to better bridge the gaps of conflict that confront us not just in public policy arenas, but in all human arenas. And so this tribute today to Bert is also a tribute not only to his memory, 
but to the partnership of Lois and Bert that empowered me so much in our work. And as you know, I'm not a, a native of Santa Cruz. I live in Monterey County in Carmel and knew Bert before the advent of email in Lois. And I can attest he was indeed a master of the facts. And my early communications with Bert and Lois were always through uh, very passionate directives usually in the form of a telefax. We've heard of the titles that Bert held. I also gave some thought to the what Bert projected as a person. And certainly tenacity comes to mind, persistence, passion, commitment, caring, and loyalty. Bert was a very loyal person to his family, to his community, to the planet, and to people like all of us who had the honor and the distinction of being considered a friend by Bert. And that loyalty inured to the benefit of many in this room, particularly those who have served in political office here in, this, in the city of Santa Cruz, the county of Santa Cruz, in our region. I know that Bert's tenacity, passion, and loyalty helped to recruit and mentor uh, many people who came in to a changing Santa Cruz after the establishment of the university, where the regents, as I recall, with then Governor Reagan, sought to design a campus that would not lend itself to the public outpouring of demonstrations such as we experienced in Berkeley. So they designed different colleges and lots of redwoods and no real giant meeting areas. But the one defect in that planning was that they included this beautiful piece of land within the city limits of the city of Santa Cruz. And that led to the transformation of the leadership of the city of Santa Cruz by bringing in a new voting block of students who cared about the environment, who cared about US foreign policy as projected in Central America and other parts of the world. And Bert was one of those pioneers who came to the council as a planner with a passion and commitment to the environment and helped in the cultivation and recruitment of people like Mike Rotkin, John Laird, Bruce Van Allen, Marty Warmhout, Jane Weed, the list goes on and on. But those are some of the people who I know owe their political empowerment in many ways to, to the support of Bert and Lois. And as was mentioned by Catherine, Bert and Lois uh, perfected the art of the crab cake fundraiser. <laughs> and as Catherine mentioned, I was fortunate to be one of the last beneficiaries of one of those fundraising events this past August. And we'd actually tried to put that together last year, um, or, or the year prior, it would have been 2010. And we had a couple false starts, we had some scheduling problems, but Bert's persistence, he wouldn't let it go. And we continued to work together, and uh, Bert and Lois and many of the members of the family helped host a wonderful afternoon. And Bert was, his role of course was to welcome people and to make an introduction. Well, as the introduction went on and on and on, I kept calibrating that my comments should be shorter and shorter. Um, <laughs> but that was the Bert that we loved. And I just want to close on some of the international work. I, my wife Dana and I did a lot of work in Central America in the late 70s and throughout the 1980s with a primary focus on medical relief in El Salvador. But we associated with and supported many people doing work in Nicaragua in the different phases of the Sandinista revolution and then the Contra war that was so devastating and deadly to so many innocents and I think to the image of our nation around the world. And then the rebuilding and the restructuring uh, of Nicaragua after the ultimate defeat of the Contra-led intervention from, from outside. Uh, Bert and Lois, and we heard from, from Kurt Brooks and others of the 
tremendous organization that is now the Three Americas, but as the Coalition for Nicaragua, as a way to fund medical relief and other forms of humanitarian support, creating a fair trade system of bringing fair trade coffee, and fair trade not just a term, but a very technical term that goes to the ecology and the humanitarianism of the cultivation of the coffee, not just its environmental sustenance and how it's grown, but the human sustenance and how labor practices and a fair living wage are part of what goes on that fair trade coffee label. And I remember receiving a fax from Bert um, announcing a new shipment of coffee and that he and Lois were going to be in Monterey County and they'd be glad to come by and bring Dana and me some fair trade coffee, a, a new import, a new batch from Nicaragua. And we said, sure, where can we meet you? And he said, no, that's fine, we'll come by your house. And they came by our home, they had a guest with them, I think they were headed to Big Sur that afternoon. And yet all of the back and forth of the directions and the negotiation and finding the time that would work for everybody, by the time they got there, we'd committed to one bag of coffee. I think it was about $5. And I felt they've gone to all this effort to drive to our home in Carmel. Uh, they're making a special delivery door to door. So I think we upped our order from one bag to four bags um, <laughs> to support the cause. and also to stock our, our cupboards with fair trade coffee from Nicaragua. And more recently, seeing Bert and Lois uh, staffing uh, the coffee booth, the fair trade coffee at the farmer's market at Cabrillo College, and this within just recent months when Bert was clearly frail and was less mobile than, than he had been in, in prior years and still the passion, the commitment, the persistence of any willing or unwilling uh, <laughs> potential buyer. Bert was there not just to promote fair trade coffee, but to provide the context of the importance of us supporting fair trade coffee. So I think part of Bert's legacy will indeed be our continued support for the Three Americas, I know there's a scholarship fund at San Jose State University that will also be a vehicle uh, to promote and preserve uh, Bert's legacy to help students who were touched, like Bill Aliud and others, to pursue careers of protecting our coast, not just our coastal environment, but the in environmental integrity of our communities. I'm going to miss Bert greatly as a friend. Um, I look forward to continued work and connection with Lois and all the family. I want to thank the family for sharing so much of Bert with us through all these years. Um, and as has been said earlier, Bert's spirit will live strong with everybody who knew and loved him. I know we will do a, a presente a little bit later in the program. I just want to close once again by thanking the family. Uh, thank you, Bert, and que viva. Bert Muley. Thank you. Our next guest and on your program is Sylvia Panetta. Uh, Lois and I put these remarks together maybe a week or so ago, and it was Sylvia Panetta was our speaker. Sylvia has brought a guest along with her. But my remarks are really going to introduce Sylvia, who will introduce our special guest. But let me start by saying Sylvia Panetta is director of the Panetta Institute of Public Policy, founded by Sylvia and her husband, Leon Panetta, who is currently Secretary of Defense, appointed by President Obama in 2011. Lois and Bert supported Leon and Sylvia and every one of Leon's elections with the famous crab cake fundraisers <laughs> and proudly watched their progress through national and international affairs. Bert was always so very proud of Leon's success and the role that he and Lois played in that success. Lois always thought that every election that Leon won, the public really got two people, not just one, and that one or the other one is Sylvia Panetta. Welcome, Sylvia Panetta and welcome Leon Panetta. 
Leanne and I have known Bert and Louis, uh, Lois since 1975. In all those years, he never hesitated to share his home, to share his support, and to share the knowledge and to share his heart. He and Lois not only introduced Leon and me to Santa Cruz and the issues of concern to the community, but Bert constantly challenged us to consider the global community in our efforts to affect positive change. His vision wasn't limited to congressional districts or election cycles. Bert saw this entire hemisphere and the world as an opportunity to give back and to improve the course of humanity. When speaking with our students at the Panetta Institute, Leon and I often reflect that when we were coming of age, the words of President John F. Kennedy calling us to consider ways to give back to our country had a powerful impact on us. We were deeply touched by this call to service, and service continued as the guiding principle of our lives. Indeed, at the Institute, we work every day to inspire young people to take up the torch of service. In Bert, we had a true kindred spirit. Bert not only gave his life to service, but he was a constant inspiration to others. His accomplishments, his intelligence, and his passion will always serve as a model for the best kind of global citizen for years to come. And I know that he would most want to be remembered through the continuation of his work, an effort to have all reject apathy and inaction and instead embra embrace education, embrace inclusiveness, and above all, embrace service. In the close to 50 years that Leon and I have spent working on behalf of our communities and this nation, everything that we have accomplished has been as a result of the partnerships that we formed. We've been blessed to work with and alongside a wide variety of individuals who, while they may have come from different backgrounds, had different political perspectives or held different points of view, were committed to working to make things better. Bert and Lois have always understood this. They have been true partners and true friends to all. And indeed, I would be remiss if I didn't also add that for all of Bert's energy and wisdom, his legacy is in large part due to his lifelong friend and companion, Lois. In projects that Bert could combine forces in Bert, uh, that Bert undertook, Lois was always at his side. I often looked at them as models on how a couple could combine forces to accomplish more together than we could, they could, apart. In their 65 years together, they raised and nurtured a large family and were a formidable force to be reckoned with in Santa Cruz County. I have said that I admired Bert's ability to work with others and to form coalitions and partnerships, and it was Lois who was his true partner. I am so thankful for the lessons that I have learned from this couple's example. Thank you. Bert was in every way a blessing to us all. It is a testament to his great work that I am certain men and women from around the globe will continue to benefit from his compassion for generations to come. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce to you um, someone who had not planned to be here because he couldn't, at least so we thought at the time. And, um, uh, Late yesterday afternoon, I got a call, and he said, I'm on the way. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I was delighted because I knew that everyone here would want to hear what he has to say about our dear friend, Bert. So I introduce to you my partner, my loving husband, Leon Panetta.
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, I really wanted to be here. I wanted to be here because uh, Bert and Lois uh, were such dear friends and, and supporters. Uh, I wanted to be here because it's always great to come home and get the hell out of Washington. <laughs> and I also wanted to be here because the last damn thing that Bert would ever expect is the Secretary of Defense speaking <laughs> of it. Uh, Bert, Bert was uh, a dear friend. Uh, and someone who is very special and a great supporter. And it's difficult to believe that uh, his voice for protecting the beauty of this area, for protecting the rights of the poor, of the persecuted, of the oppressed, uh, is now gone. Uh, it is it's something that made coming here particularly special because Bert was somebody who more than anyone else that I met, I met a lot of people throughout my political career, but he was someone who really understood that the responsibility of political leaders is not simply to survive in office. The responsibility of political leaders is to fight and to lead. And the responsibility of supporters is not to tolerate complacence, but to demand action and to demand that leadership. And that is what Bert Muley was all about. And it's what made him so special. He was a very loyal supporter. And he worked hard in every campaign that we ran in this area uh, that uh, Sylvia and I put together. And he was tremendously helpful to me and understanding and getting involved with the people and the issues here in Santa Cruz. As most of you know, the politics of Santa Cruz can be a little strange. <laughs> very interesting, very challenging. Uh, when I first came here, uh, Bert said, oh no, you gotta, you gotta really get involved, you gotta go to every event, you gotta be there, people have to see you. I remember going to events, God, I think it was John Tuck and Paul Dragovan. <laughs> they, they had some strange events. Uh, and thank God the cops never showed up. Uh, there, were, there were barbecues, there were picnics, there were sit-ins. Uh, going to uh, Bert's house and uh, for fundraisers, uh, the ones everybody's talked about, going to uh, Bert's house uh, for basically Bert's town hall meetings, uh, and uh, going through the issues and going through the debates that were there. Uh, for all of that, for all of that, what he wanted to make sure of what he was all about was that we were doing everything possible to help improve the lives of our fellow human beings. I am, uh, as, as most of you know, the son of immigrants. And I always recall how, when I used to ask my father, why, why would you travel all of that distance to come to a strange land uh, with no money and no language abilities and no skills, why would you do that? And he would say the reason is because my mother and he believed 
that they could give their children a better life here. And I think that is the dream that all of us have for our children. And it's the dream that, frankly, the families of the world have for their children. And it was Bert's dream. That was the fundamental value, the fundamental principle in his heart and in his soul. And God help you if you didn't share it. Uh, he was he was somebody who I think probably better than anybody else understood what public service was really all about and that the, the fundamental goal of public service ought to be to help others and at every meeting every discussion Every conversation, every phone call, every letter, every fax, he made very clear that you better damn well be working to help people get a better life. That's what he was about. I can, at the same time, remember that Bert, for all of his passion, for all of his zeal, for all of his desire to try to make things happen, that deep down one of his great strengths was that he was also a pragmatist and that he knew politics, he understood issues, he understood the kind of waves that go on uh, in the political streams and he also understood that you had to take those into consideration in order to get things done. And I think that's what made him a great mayor. It's what made him a great councilman. It's what made him a great friend and a great advisor. Uh, like I'm sure some of my fellow elected leaders, there were moments where Bert and I would spend a lot of time screaming at each other. Uh, and I can remember one evening at the house just kind of going at it for about a half hour and of course, Lois kind of always wandering in the background trying to. <laughs> Thank God for Lois. <laughs> and we finally ran out of breath, and we were taking a deep breath. And Bert kind of looked and finally said, All right, we both got that out of our system. Now, what the hell do we do to deal with this, the issue? And that was, that's what he was about. And that's what made him so great. Today, as Secretary of Defense, one of the toughest jobs that I have, one of the toughest jobs that I have, is to write condolence letters to the families of those whose sons or daughters have given their lives for this nation. In each note, I express the deepest sorrow for each loss. But I also remind every family that throughout our history, we have been blessed by heroes who have had the courage to fight for what they believe in, and yes, to even die for what they believe in. And Bert Muley, in his own way, is the consummate citizen warrior who had the courage to always fight for what he believed in. And yes, there's no question in my mind that he would die for what he believed in. He is and always will be an American patriot. And like those fallen soldiers, his life will hopefully inspire other citizens 
and particularly young people, to pick up the torch of freedom and justice and continue the fight for a better America and a better world. I'm glad I've had the chance to come home and to be with all of you, many of you dear friends from the past and dear supporters, and I thank you for everything you've done for Sylvia and I, and to be here to celebrate Bert's life. Washington, as Sam knows, can be a real zoo. It has changed a lot since I first went back to Washington. It is more partisan, it is meaner, and in many ways it's dysfunctional. And the danger is that it's easy in that atmosphere to lose your common sense and more importantly use, lose your humanity. And coming home, for me, makes very clear what's important in life. The ones you love, your wife, your family, the beauty of this area, and good people like Bert and Lois Muley. God bless you, Lois. God bless your entire family. You've always been a perfect complement to Bert Muley. We will miss him. I'll miss his, his passion, his conscience, his commitment, and his love of his fellow human beings. But his memory will always be there to inspire us to do what's right for others. And I think that all of us can take some comfort in knowing that God now has Bert Muley to tell him what to do. <laughs> In 1974, uh, was a mayor of the city of Santa Cruz, and but I was free to do what I wanted under no political constraints, as you are when you work in the public service. And so they said, uh, well, he said, well, look, we're going to go down to Guadalajara, and we're taking Spanish. And they said, well, look, our uh, uh, our group is going to go down to Nicaragua, and this was way back in 1982. And so they said, uh, maybe uh, you can get away from your class at San Diego branch in Guadalajara and come with us. And this is what was done. Some of the brigadistas are right here right now. And uh, they uh, went over to Monterey after sleeping overnight in Watsonville, and I was among them. And I uh, gave a talk over there and said, I'm going to Nicaragua, and we're going to build a house, a school, and a water system. And... Uh, uh, anybody here want to go down and to work on it? And five of those people raised their hand. And you have John Bartolero and and and, uh, and, and Keith Greninger and and uh, Catherine uh, Banghart. And I hope Michael Ackerman came. And here you see, as we uh, can uh, look back on the project, the Mountain of the Spring, uh, the defense housing on the Mesa. And these are products of people with a heart, and people with compassion, and people with understanding that to reach your potential, uh, you have to be able to go to school, to read, to function. And here's uh, the response of the youngsters who wrote and sent them communications. And what I liked uh, so much about it is that uh, the message in Spanish said uh, hugs and kisses uh, to the children in Santa Cruz uh, 
uh, by from the children of El Mamanal. I know. I first met Bert. I was about 20, uh, 22 years old. In that part of your life where you think you know everything and you think you know what's going on and exactly where you're going, and then some cool old guy comes along and shows you that you don't, <laughs> but shows you that you kind of do. You just need his help. And it was at a small, small place in Monterey, I think the town center. And this, this guy jumped off, literally dropped down a box, stepped up on the box and said, any of you carpenters or people like that who want to go with us and help build houses in Nicaragua, come along with me. And my buddy and I looked at each other and we said, well, psh, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, I don't know. Let's... So we go up and we start talking to this wonderful guy who was so infectious. I mean, we, we were both carpenters and we were looking for something to do. And, and I swear to God, two weeks later, I'm, I'm driving up and down in the back of a beat-up old Toyota truck down the dirt roads of Nicaragua with Bert screaming in my ear, yelling, hey! And I'm just looking at him going, what the heck am I doing here, man? And of course, it went on to influence my life in, in amazing ways, and uh, I, I wouldn't be the same without it. So while I was down there, I wrote a song um, for the children of Nicaragua. We were working on a project through a group called Absnica, which Bert was a big part of. It was called Architects and Planners in Support of Nicaragua. And we went down there and helped build a school and a water system and a bunch of very small shelters that they felt were mansions to us. They would be considered little, little shacks, but it was an incredibly rewarding experience. Um, and this is called Ay Nicaragua, and at the end of this song, I'd like you to help us sing a little bit of uh, Nicaragua, Nicaraguito. We'll, we'll couple those together. And then... Oh, this has a nice chorus, too. I think Bert would want you to sing. Um, it goes like this. Ay Nicaragua your time has come and may your future shine like the eyes of your young we're gonna try that all together ready come on bert's watching now here we go i need caragua your time has come your time has come and may your future shine like the eyes of your young Long before the morning sun can be seen The little ones gather water from the streams Smiles on their faces all in a line Praise this revolution for the children are growing fine. After morning chores while the weather's still cool, see the little ones hurry off to school. Excitement on their faces, running through the weeds. Praise this revolution for now they can learn to read. You've got to praise this revolution for now they're learning to read. Ay Nicaragua, ay Nicaragua, your time has come, your time has come, and may your future shine like the eyes of. Laughing young boys are running from base to base Hearts pumping and breathing Hell they never seem to slow the pace and Smiles on their faces as one breaks away Praise this revolution for now there's time to play You got to praise this revolution for now there's time to play Ay, Nicaragua, your time has come. Ay, Nicaragua, your time has come. And may your future shine like the eyes of your young. And 
And laughing young girls, they gather firewood To take back home where mama cooks the food Smiles on their faces, got no shoes on their feet Praise is revolution, for now there's more to eat You got to praise this revolution, for now there's more to eat Ay, Nicaragua, your time is coming Ay, Nicaragua, your time has come And may your future shine like the eyes of your young One last time we'll just sing an a cappella together Ay Nicaragua Your time has come May your future shine Like the eyes of Ay, Nicaragua, Nicaraguita, la flor más linda de mi querer, a bonita que la bendita Nicaraguita, sangre de dijer en él. Ay, Nicaragua, sos más dulcita que la melita de tamanga. Pero ahora que Jesús libre Nicaragüita, yo te quiero mucho más. Pero ahora que Jesús libre Nicaragüita, yo te quiero mucho más. Everybody. On behalf of the Muleys, thank you so much. You've been a spirited and wonderful, and it looks like Lois wants to speak. I'm sorry. Oh.